for carrying on this program, which has been very unique to see the first round of presentations this morning. Uh, so I, I suppose a big hand should be just going to the culmination of this, of this project that I has been, has been carrying forward for some years now. Uh, I work at an archive, and um, we're in a panel now post-lunch, after a pretty heavy and delicious lunch, so God save us, because there's going to be a lot of discussions only on archives. Uh, but as a lot of you would know about archives, we, uh, it's a lot of documents, it's a lot of black and white stuff. And we, on the other hand, are going to be looking at even sound-based media and things like that. So it's going to be a rather interesting array of material and documents. So one thing for sure is that we sort of feel like we're part of some kind of huge archival explosion. And almost everything that, has, that comes as an accumulation of information material seems to be termed as archives. I mean, people talk about their grandmother's an archive, or my uncle's an archive, my, my village or my city is an archive, or movies an archive. So there's this expanded notion of the archive that we seem to be carrying with us and using left, right, and center. And one of the triggers for this might, in fact, be the digital era that we're part of. And these digital technologies of disseminating, documenting, storage, and retrieval, all of which seem to be um, producing a condition in which we think there's a constant archiving happening by default, right? And the internet almost seems to be that, par that para, umbrella archive in which we live. People call Facebook an archive, people call Instagram an archive. But as Wolfgang Ernst, an, uh, a media theorist, uh, referred to in some of his works, he says that to, the idea to archive everything is in fact very non-archival. And so going by that, um, one starts thinking about really how did this expansion of the term archive really come to be? And one may also trace its genealogies to the kind of post-colonial, subaltern, and feminist critiques of the archive, all of which have really gone to contest, question, what is the nature of the document on which memory, on which collective memory resides? And so, we have then, on the one hand, this digital explosion which says that everything is an archive, and on the other, various discourses that are really rigorously questioning um, and struggling uh, uh, sometimes and contesting the very apparatus that seems to want to capture uh, various kinds of subjects and communities. And so in that context, then we have, on the one hand, this very expanded notion, and on the other, a sort of apparatus which still seems to operate via various kinds of institutions. And what I'm going to do for this panel is, because we've got a panel of practically nine people, first have a conversation with three of, an, of the institutional directors of various archives that we have on our panel. And it's not going to be a presentation mode. It's going to be a Q&A with uh, Professor Tapati Guha Takurta, who has been the director of the uh, Center for Studies in Social Sciences, Calcutta, CSSC. Professor Shubha Chaudhary, who has been the director for a few decades already of the ARC, American Research, uh, for Ethnomusicology, Archive and Research Center for uh, Ethnomusicology. And we have uh, Surjit, Professor Surjit, who is the director of the uh, Center for Community Knowledge, the CCK uh, department in the Ambedkar University. So may I please call all three of you on stage and where we can discuss a big round of applause to, to our three first panelists. So the idea to call these three on, on stage was also because when we're looking at archives in these kind of infrastructures, in these kind of institutions, the very protocols and infrastructures of access are rather different from how we imagine everything is accessible on the internet. Um, those infrastructures are heavily dependent on various kinds of technologies that have gone into really being established as representative of certain kinds of memories. So whether you have the photographic evidence or textual records stand by certain kinds of authorities, or you have certain kinds of recordings on which memory can reside in a musicology or a performing archive, and then a far more open-ended idea of what an archive can really capture or should capture uh, with the CCK is what we really want to discuss. So I'm going to start with a round of Q&A really with our panelists to kind of discuss on first and foremost really if uh, Professor Tapati could begin by telling us really um, not the history of uh, uh, CSSC's archive, but more so when you arrived at CSSC, what was the kind of collection you inherited 
And over the course of your directorship, what changes did you see uh, uh, through to this archive? 